In this video, I'm going to show you how to change the background color of your images in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to change the background color of your images in Photoshop. So we're going to start with an easy image like this one and I'm going to show you an easy technique to select the background and change the color. Then we're going to move on to a bit more advanced technique and I'm going to show you how to change the background color and also retain the shadows and the bounce light. If you want to follow along with this tutorial, you can download the project files from the link in the description below and let's get started on this tutorial. So to change the background color in this image, we need to first select the subject and to do that we can take the quick selection tool and then you can make a selection around your subject like so. If you are in a newer version of Photoshop, you can click on the select and mask button and Photoshop is going to automatically select the subject for you using artificial intelligence. You can see that Photoshop did miss some areas and we can fix that by using the quick selection tool and you can use alt or option to exclude some areas from the selection like so. And I'm going to exclude these areas of the background inside her hand. Okay, so once you have your subject selected, you can also click on Q to enter the quick mask mode. And as you can see, we still have to exclude some areas of the background inside the hair. So to fix that, we can click on the select and mask button to enter the select and mask panel. And from here, you can take the refine edge brush and then paint on top of the hair to remove the background and fine tune the selection. Okay, I'm going to paint on this area as well to include this part of the hair. And that looks good to me. You can spend a little bit more time to fine tune the selection. And then once you're happy with the selection, you can choose the output mode. And I'm going to choose selection and then click OK. Then what I'm going to do now is invert the selection because we have the subject selected and we want to select the background. So to invert the selection, click on Control shift i and now we have the background selected. Now what I'm going to do is add a hue saturation adjustment layer. And as you can see, the selection will be automatically applied to the layer mask. And now you can simply use the hue slider to change the color to whatever you want. And as you can see, that was really easy to do once you have a good selection of your subject. So that's the easy method to select and change the background color. In the next example, we have a little bit more complicated image. We have the subject closer to the wall and we have a shadow behind her. And also the background is white and we cannot use hue saturation to change the color because we don't have color information to change in the first place. So I'm going to show you a different method to change the color of a white background. So first we need to select the subject and I already have a selection saved to save some time. So I'm going to go to select and then load selection. I'm going to click OK. And again, we need to invert the selection to select the background. Click on Control Shift I to invert the selection. And this time I'm going to choose a solid color instead of a hue saturation. And I'm going to pick a color from what she's wearing. Okay, now I'm going to click OK. And as you can see, the color of the background is changed, but we need to bring back that shadow. And we can do that by changing the blending mode of the solid color to multiply. And now we have the shadows back and the image looks more realistic now. But we still have some problems to fix like the hair. We need to fix the edges of the hair and give it some of that color of the background in order for it to look realistic. 
So what I'm going to do is duplicate the solid color by clicking on Ctrl J. And then I'm going to group the solid color by clicking on Ctrl G. And then I'm going to click and drag the mask to the group to apply this layer mask to the whole group. I also want this group to affect the subject. So I'm going to invert the layer mask by clicking on Ctrl I. And basically what I did is everything inside this group will only affect the subject because we have this layer mask applied to the group. So now I'm going to add an inverted layer mask by clicking on Alt or Option. And then we can take the brush tool and paint on the edges of the hair to remove that color fringing. What you can also do is add a new layer on top of this, then also change the blending mode to multiply, and then you can sample the same color of the hair and paint on top of the hair to remove that fringing as well. I'm going to reduce the opacity to 50%, and then paint on top of the hair, and as you can see, this makes the color look a lot more realistic. And we got rid of that fringing as well. So this is before and after. So now that we fixed the hair, and as you can see, this looks a lot better than before. But we also need to pay attention to another thing, and that is the reflection of that color on the wall on her skin. So if I zoom in a little bit more, and I'm going to turn off all the layers that we added. As you can see, there is some light reflection on the edges. And that is called the bounce light. So basically the light will hit the wall and then it bounces back on the skin. And that's what gives us the bounce light color on the edges of the skin. So we need to replicate that with our new color in order for the image to look realistic. So I'm going to turn back these layers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to also take the brush tool. I'll change the foreground color to white. And then you're going to simply paint on the edges to create that bounce light. So make sure to paint with a low flow and opacity to paint that light. And also use the longer brush stroke to make that light look realistic. And also you won't get some red spots in one area. And the color is going to look a lot more realistic. So I'm going to spend a little bit more time to paint on the edges of the skin and paint that bounce light. Another thing you need to pay attention to is you don't need to paint that bounce light everywhere and with the same intensity. Because if you take a closer look, her left arm is closer to the wall. That means the bounce light color will be stronger on her left arm and not on her right arm. So in the right area, I'm going to paint with a little bit low opacity. And also I'm going to make sure to paint that bounce light a little bit lighter on this area.
Okay, so I made sure to paint that bounce light on the edges and if I turn this layer on and off, you can see that bounce light color made the image look a lot more realistic than before. And if you want to change the color in the future, we have solid color adjustment layers and we can simply double click on them and change the color and make sure also to change the same color to the bounce light layers as well. So that's how to change the background color in Photoshop and also retain the shadows and the bounce light. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to like this video and also subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out new tutorials when I upload them to the channel. If you want to learn more about Photoshop and compositing, you can enroll in my free compositing course. I'll make sure to put that link in the description below for you. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next tutorial.